this episode of It's Me or the Dog. <laughs> Victoria meets newlyweds Josh and Ashley <laughs> and their three massive Great Danes, Henry, Jackson, and new puppy Charlotte. The dogs are wreaking havoc at home. It was probably the most insane greeting I've ever had. In the car. Shut up! Stop it! And at work. It's very unprofessional. This cannot continue, and it's not going to continue. Ashley's obsession with the dogs. I cross my legs on the sofa and I'll do whatever I want to. As Josh at a breaking point. I never would have pictured myself doing this. Can Victoria convince Ashley to take a step back? I think you get as much separation anxiety as they do. Or will their three Great Danes leave their home? They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They're probably knocked over the coffee table. And their marriage. Shut the door, Ashley. I can't. In shambles. She's going to tear up our door. <laughs> Oh, 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 that! Victoria Stillwell has been training dogs in Great Britain and the United States for nearly 14 years. Today, she's on her way to meet Josh and Ashley Fort and their three enormous Great Danes. It's important for owners to form a close bond with their pets, but if you don't give your dog some level of independence, you might find yourself in a very unhealthy relationship, and that could have serious consequences. We're newlyweds, just married over a year, and we already have three massive dogs. Henry, Jackson, and Charlotte. I would love, if I had it my way, to have 20 or 30 dogs just running around the house, just open my own rescue. However, Josh says he will divorce me if I bring home any more, so we're gonna stop at three. Before Victoria begins training, she'll spend the day with the family, observing their issues. When I first rang the doorbell, I heard lots of barks. And then the door opened, and it was madness. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Charlotte started fighting with Henry. The couple was trying to keep the dogs back, but they couldn't keep the dogs back. The dogs flew out of the door. The trees fell everywhere. The dogs ran around the porch. I got nearly got knocked over. It was probably the most insane greeting I've ever had. Hi. Hello. Come on. Come on, guys. That was a greeting and a half. Isn't it, though? Come on in and grab a seat before they take it from you. OK. When I finally managed to get in and sit down, the dogs were either fighting over me or fighting with each other and, and then playing and then licking and slobbering and trying to get on the sofa. And it was very difficult to have a conversation with all of them being there. <laughs> oh, gosh. Not a lot of dogs nibble at your ear. But, but, but he is gentle. Yeah. Right. He's very gentle. It's like this, hmm. He's the gentle one. Henry is not gentle. When he nips, it's not cute, and it's not funny, and it's not gentle. OK. So tell me, tell me about other stuff that's going on. They really have become our children. They're so needy, which I just, I guess I love that. that I just, they absolutely couldn't function without me. What do you think about that? I'm, I'm not on the same page as that. Ashley does think these are her babies, no question. And neither one can live without each other. The three of them go absolutely everywhere with me, because I feel like I'm neglecting them if I leave them home without their mommy. I, I just. Henry, no, sir. I always want her to pet me. We have voices for all the dogs. Ashley started to speak in some different voices. A very southern voice for Henry. He's a southern, has a redneck. A somewhat demented British accent for Jackson. I cross my legs on the sofa and I'll do whatever I want to. And a very princess-like accent for Charlotte. I'm the pretty, pretty princess. A little kooky, but funny. Another off-the-wall habit Ashley has adopted is cooking gourmet meals for the dogs twice a day. I buy a 10-pound thing of ground beef. And Josh cooks wow. this for me every Sunday. Wow, that's a hunk of meat. That is a hunk of meat right there. Josh, do you like cooking for the dogs? Um, no, I don't, honestly. Not at all. It's, uh, I, I think it's, I think it's a bit excessive. I don't remember how I got suckered into this, because I never would have pictured myself doing this. I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. <laughs> I have no problem with the dogs being on this diet. 
but Josh seems at his wit's end. I think he, in a way, gets very angry that Ashley pays him so much attention. And I think he's had enough. Along with home cooking, the dogs also get constant companionship from Ashley. I take the three dogs everywhere I go. If I go to the grocery store, they come and sit in the car. If I go to the gym sometimes, I'll bring them with me. When I go to work, they come with me. When I go to my family and friends' houses, they have to come with me. I will not leave them. Get back! Once all the dogs were in the car and Ashley got in and I tried to get in, Henry put his head out. He did not want me near that car and he was being ultra protective. I'm gonna try and get in here without getting my head bitten off. Shut up! Stop it! Henry! Stop! Bad! Ashley does yell at the dogs a lot in the car, but the yelling just has no effect on the dogs whatsoever. They don't listen to her. And the yelling makes their behavior worse. Jackson! Henry, would you stop barking? If they see anybody walking along the street, they go ballistic, especially Jackson. Oh, there goes the... Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh. I mean, it is. That's, that's effective. We're on a windy country road. She's driving with one hand as she's trying to push the other dogs with her back, and I'm nervous we're going to have an accident. And when Ashley stops for a quick errand, the dogs pose another kind of danger. If Ashley wants to stop at the supermarket, she leaves the air conditioning on, the car running, but the window's down for the dogs. So anybody passing that car has a huge Great Dane head lunging out at them. Don't touch them. That is a massive liability. I have been in many cars with very difficult dogs, but I have to say, this gets the prize for being the craziest car ride I have ever been on. Jackson! Shut up! Another place the dogs accompany Ashley is to work every single day. All three of the dogs come to work with me because I refuse to leave them home alone during the day. Hey, how you doing? Hi, nice I'm to Alan. meet you. Good Hi, to Alan. Ed. Hi. I'm Ashley's dad, and I'm also the boss man here. OK. At least that's what they tell me. Stop. Hey, stop. Oh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the crate is not attractive. When we walked into Ashley's work, I saw that the dogs have pretty free reign in the office. <laughs> what is it like? working in an environment with these dogs. These guys are pretty rowdy, and at times, you know, it's hard to do business here because we do get some public traffic in here. And I'm afraid that somebody's going to get bit, especially maybe by Henry, you know, which is going to create another problem for me. In Alan, Ashley's father, the owner's eyes, uh, it's very unprofessional. And, and I agree, it is. And we cannot seem to get a handle on it. Hey, quit! So tell me, what's going to happen if this situation continues? This cannot continue, and it's not going to continue. And so if we can't get this worked out, then, you know, I guess she'll just have to stay home with the dogs. Are you firing your daughter? Uh, no, I would never fire her. I would retire her. When my father told Victoria that he would re quote unquote retire me, I was quite shocked. You know, I always kind of look at this as a joke, and for him to actually say that to her is kind of a wake up call for me. It was very upsetting. What is it going to mean to you, Ashley, if you, if your father retires <laughs> you, as he puts it so nicely? Oh gosh, that would just be a huge financial burden for us. You know, we're newlyweds. We just got our first house. It would just be a huge strain. It would just be horrible. Josh and Ashley, they're newlyweds. They shouldn't start their marriage off like this. They now have three dogs, huge dogs at that, massive liability, exhausting, taking over the home and work and the car and every single situation. It's a nightmare. Coming up, Ashley laughs off Victoria's concerns. That's easier? You're saying the ride in the car is easier? <laughs> Will she realize what's at stake? You have no life. You can't have friends over. You might get fired from your job. 
Victoria Stilwell has spent the day observing Ashley and Josh's chaotic life with three Great Danes. Now it's time for her to sit down and confront them with the facts. This has been a very interesting day. Sure. <laughs> Craziness. Mm -hmm. And you live this every day. Every day. And there is no doubt in my mind that these dogs are very, very much loved. But they are out of control. Now, Ashley, there's one thing that causes a lot of problems for dogs. And that one thing is that when people treat them like human beings. And you've gone over the top. It's too much. Because they've taken over your life. Now, you have admitted they are your children. You feel that they can't exist without you. They exist without you, fine. They've got each other. I was extremely shocked when Victoria made the point that the dogs can and will function perfectly fine without me. So that was a huge eye-opener. And Josh, would you say any of this is taking a toll on your marriage? I, I, I would. I, it, it's taking a lot of time out of our marriage, mm -hmm. which is, that's the most frustrating thing for me, the, the, the fact that we are prisoners to these dogs. Let me talk about your situation at home. When I came through that door... <laughs> What's happening is you've got three dogs, all very excited, redirecting all their excitement and frustration on each other. Oh OK. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> it is an accident waiting to happen. I hope you've got great homeowner's insurance, because you're in for a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Like that. Now, Ashley, I have never been as nervous as I was driving in your car. Oh, there it goes. Oh, dear. If you go for a trip to the convenience store, why do you need to take your dogs? It's easier to just take them than to fight them off it's and easier. leave them. Here. That's easier? You're saying the ride in the car is easier? <laughs> now, you are very lucky you work for your father, but your father has got to the point where he's saying, I'm going to retire my daughter. Nice way of saying, you're going to be fired. Then you're going to be in financial difficulties because mm -hmm. you can't support a mortgage just on what Josh owns. Mm -hmm. So then all the pressure is going to fall on him. The situation is out of control. For so long, you've been enabling the dog's behavior. You've been treating them like children. You have no life. You can't have friends over. You might get fired from your job. This is pure, pure insanity, pure madness. I have only a very, very short time to rein in three completely out of control dogs. If I do not have your 1,000% commitment, this is not going to work. Are you ready to get started? We're willing to do it. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's do it. To begin, Victoria wants to give new puppy Charlotte some basic training. I used to love getting up every morning early when it's still cool and walking Henry and Jackson. But now that we have Charlotte, there is no managing her, so we have just put the walks on hold indefinitely. Now remember, it's hard for a little pup to have this self-control, mm -hmm. but she has to learn it. If she doesn't learn it, she's going to be an out-of-control adult. Part of the major reactivity is that these dogs aren't getting out. So Victoria on. wants to start with walking one-on-one. -on -one. Good girl. Good girl. The first challenge is to stop Charlotte from wandering off. I'm going to use this wall, and I'm going to walk up and down this wall. So she's got really nowhere else to go. Good girl. Let's go back. Whenever Charlotte pulled, Come on. Good girl. I went off in the other direction so that her pulling wasn't reinforced. She realized that mm -hmm. if she wanted to get to where she wanted to go, she'd have to walk well on the leash. Up. Oh my gosh, I don't think this is possible. Then, Victoria introduces a command to encourage Charlotte to stay by her side. Close. Good girl. Close. Let's go. Close. Good girl. When she pulled, I used a vocal correction of an ah. Good girl. Up. Turn the other way. As soon as she came up to me and was close to me, I said close. Close. Reinforced her for that. Good girl. When I wanted Charlotte to stop, I said stop. Stop! I put my foot in front of her, as if to say, when I say stop, you have to listen to me. Let's go. Stop! Stop. Wow. It was really cool to see Charlotte do exactly what Victoria told her. And it just showed me that 
we were never persistent enough. Now it's Ashley's turn. Okay, okay. get up. No, no, don't let her get to where she Charlotte, wants to go. Charlotte, let's go. Good girl, close. Charlotte, Charlotte. Charlotte wasn't focusing on Ashley very well. She's really got to take that, that leadership role. Stop, stop. I don't want you to jerk like that. You, you might have to put a tiny bit of pressure, but I want you to do more body language. Okay, close, get stop. Good. I want Ashley and Josh to reinforce this training again and again and again, because the dogs need exercise. They've got three rambunctious dogs here. Yeah, these dogs hardly get any exercise at all. Charlotte, you are going to be walking well on a leash. Perfectly, very Can't soon. Can't wait. Me either. Coming up, Ashley has to take a step away. I want you to go out for a couple of hours. But will her worst fears come true? They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They're probably knocked over the coffee table. Victoria Stillwell has begun basic training with Ashley and Josh's out of control Great Danes. Stop! Stop. Now, she wants to address the dangerous situation in Ashley's car. First thing I did with the car was to put up a reliable divider so that the dogs couldn't knock it down. And that's not the only change she's made. Oh, wow. In order for Ashley to get some control, I had to cut the vision out completely so that the dogs would focus on Ashley. And this is lawful, it's not against the law because you can still see out of your wing mirrors, but I've blacked out the back of your car here. The reason why all of them are going off when they see people come, it's the visual stimulation. When you cut out the visual stimulation, then you're gonna have dogs that don't react so much. Come on. The modifications have an immediate impact. Nice to be able to get in without my head bitten off. And no barking. The dog's are gonna be able to see out now. But as soon as Jackson or any one of them barks, this is closed and will cut their vision off completely. Okay. I'm going to operate the curtain, so you just drive. The first few miles are surprisingly calm. Do you nice. keep saying quiet? Yeah, good. I like just to say quiet, good. So they stop at the market to continue the training. Mm -hmm. Enough. Five seconds of quiet. Wow. Good. Quiet. Quiet. Very good. Ashley gets to test what she's learned when a friend stops by to chat. Hey, hey Ashley. Hi. How you doing? How are you? How are you? Doing? Whoa, Enough. You got dogs. Enough. Now, ignore them. Keep talking. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing some shopping today? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, now they got five seconds of quiet. You open it up. Good quiet. I think that that is a miracle curtain. I've never seen the dogs behave so well in the car. I never imagined it was possible. And I will be using that curtain daily. I can't believe how good they were. Your challenge, and this might take weeks, it might take months, is to have all the panels off and you're controlling those dogs with your voice. There's no reason why the dogs need to be controlling in the car anymore. It's gonna be a while though before all the dogs get it. But I believe that in the future they will. Back at the house, Victoria wants to address the dog's outrageous greeting behavior. Oh, hi. Oh my God. Hi guys. I want to give the dogs a ritual of behavior. And I want to do a ritual for you that you can use with guests that is gonna be a little time consuming to begin with, but is gonna become a habit and is gonna keep your guests safe. I had a friend that the dogs know but have nipped before come to the door. Just get up calmly, take them all into the bedroom. The goal of this training is that when the dogs hear the doorbell, instead of rushing to the door, they go to the safe place, which is the bedroom, and everybody can be more relaxed. Hi, Sandy. Okay, and I want you to have this magazine just to look at. I wanted Josh to bring Henry up first to greet the guest, because Henry is the most problematic. So I wanted him to see guests coming in as a good thing rather than a bad thing. Now, if you go and get, take Henry back into the room and bring Jackson and, and Charlotte out. Oh, 
dear. If Charlotte jumps on you, stand up and ignore. Each time Charlotte jumped up on Sandy, the guest, Sandy stood up and just ignored her so that she was boring for Charlotte. And eventually, Charlotte just walked away. Now they've lost interest, Josh, you let Henry out again. If the dogs come up to the guest and they're crowding the guest, Ashley and Josh can get up, put their bodies between the dogs and the guest, and tell the dogs to back up. Get back. Try back. not to physically touch the dogs, just tell them to back. back. Good. Well, it was a whole lot better coming in the house and not having the dogs all up under you, so it was much more pleasant to be able to come in and visit. I want you to take back your space. Right. It's just 100% better than what we've been doing. The result was fantastic. So it's, I, I, I'd be more than happy to do it, whatever it takes. The whole ritual is just basically not allowing the dogs to get to the crazy level. It's all calm. Now that the dogs are learning to relax when people come into the house, Victoria wants to show Ashley that they will be just as calm when she and Josh leave the house. These three dogs are so dependent on me that they can't even function without me for a work day. I've left them with Josh before when he was off, and he said they were crying and begging and waiting for me the entire eight hours I was gone. Well, now I want you to go out. And I want you to go out for a couple of hours. And what I've done is that there are some cameras up here that's going to record what your dogs do when you leave. OK, okay. wait and see. Uh, I was a little worried about the destruction, but more so about just leaving them and how they would feel while I was gone. Do not spend a long time saying goodbye to these dogs. In fact, all I want you to do is to say goodbye and go. No long, I'll see you later. <laughs> Are you going to be OK? <laughs> because exactly what I do. Okay. Because that's feeding their anxiety. That's going to make them anxious. Right. Say goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. And come. I want Ashley and Josh to be able to leave the dogs. I'm not concerned with the dogs being anxious. I am concerned that Charlotte will chew. While Ashley and Josh head to a coffee shop, Victoria checks in on the dogs. All good so far? These dogs are not suffering with separation anxiety. Ashley, however, isn't faring so well. They're probably running around. They're probably eating the sofa cushions. They probably knocked over the coffee table. I think Henry's probably freaking out. His mommy and his daddy left, and we didn't even say bye. I think he's sleeping. There wasn't any major anxiety. And eventually, all three of them settled down and lay in the sitting room. I'm really anxious and I'm ready to go. Let's go. Hey. So um, it was a really severe case of separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. One of the worst I've ever seen. And it was yours. Because your dogs just went. <laughs> oh my gosh. I knew it. I didn't know that was coming. It's kind of sad that they don't miss me as much as I thought, but I'm just still relieved. I would rather be able to leave them and know they're okay. So, kind of bittersweet. Coming up, will Ashley finally let go? You need to detach yourself slightly. It's not good for these dogs to be so dependent upon you. Having worked with Ashley and Josh's Great Danes at home, now Victoria wants to restore calm to their workplace. One of the biggest problems that the couple is having is at work. There's nowhere really for the dogs to go. I want to create a safe haven for the dogs. There's a particular room on the property where the dogs can go to, where they can have a little bit of time to themselves and a bit of space. Welcome to the calming room. There are going to be only two dogs in the room at a time, because three dogs in here would be too small. You have to deal with one dog out there, which is much easier than dealing with three. You can do your work. Right. And when they come in here, it's their time of zen. Now, we really weren't using that office for much of anything but just kind of a storage space. And if that's a space that will work well for getting better behavior from these dogs, and I support that fully. Whilst they're here, I'm going to put this music on. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a special calming CD for dogs. Why is it especially for dogs? Well, 
the amount of notes per minute actually um, lessens a dog's heart rate. Wow. And calms the dogs down. I'm so excited about it because we need all the help calming them as we can get. You can hear them how where the notes come. <laughs> I feel relaxed already. Right. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> So, I don't think the dog should be in here for any more than half an hour at a time without being taken out to pee, without being taken out to run around. How long do you think we need to do this? I see this going on for a very, very long time. I so mean, I would temporary. like this to become part of life. Okay. I would like this to become the norm. Mm -hmm. well, I, was, I was a little surprised that that was a, uh, this is a forever thing. This leaving him in the back office is forever. This is, n this is not an excuse to bring the dogs to work every day. I want you to try at least a couple of mornings to leave the dogs at home. Okay. I think I can do that. All right. Wait. At first, Jackson and Henry are a little concerned, but just seconds later, they settle down. That gives Victoria a chance to work one-on-one -on -one with Charlotte. This is the training that I want you to do with every dog. And I'm going to show you with Charlotte, and it's your job to start training with the other dogs. But I just want them to go to their bed when you say, go to your bed. I'm not sure that Charlotte's going to take that very well. She needs your one-on-one -on -one time as a pup. And this time can be her quiet time here. Okay. Victoria I uses a vocal command paired with a treat to encourage Charlotte to stay on her bed. Stay. No, pup, pup. Mm -mm. Here, on your bed. Stay. Stay. Oh my God. Stay. I'm going to be working here. Stay. I'm not angry with her. I'm not going to be angry. You bet. Good girl. Stay. We usually yell at her, so that's very Absolutely different not. than what we've been doing. Because she's quite sensitive. Stay. A lot of self control for this dog. Stay. Stay. Very good. Very good. After a few minutes, Charlotte started to pick up uh, Victoria's training. And I'm just shocked at how smart she really is. Now it's Ashley's turn to give it a try. Take it away. Charlotte, get on your bed. Good girl. Whoops. Good girl. On your bed. What's it like to see this little out of control, crazy Charlotte? I can't believe it. it. Listening to you and having some self control. It's unbelievable. It's a different dog right there. Never seen him do that. I can't believe she's staying for me. I was very proud of Charlotte. I thought she did very well. She actually stayed on her bed, and I think that we're going to make a lot of progress with her. I'm leaving you now for a little while, and uh, you have three unruly dogs, so you have a lot of work to do. First of all, at work, it is your duty to keep your employees safe. It is your duty to keep your father happy. Right? <laughs> you need to detach yourself slightly. It's not good for these dogs to be so dependent upon you. All right? You need to be able to let go. I would like you to take Charlotte out and carry on with the walking training with her. I'd like you to do the same sort of thing with both the dogs. Okay. And I want you to walk each dog separately. It's been a pleasure working with you. Good luck. Thank and you. I shall see you upon your return. You've got a big job ahead of you. We oh, sure do. Oh, oh, Thank gosh. you so much for right. helping us. So You're welcome. Good luck. Bye. Bye. I really feel like I've given Ashley and Josh a lot of options with which to train their dogs. And I think if they follow them, there's no reason why the whole family can't be successful. Coming up. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye, guys. Ashley heads to work without the dogs. 
Yeah, where are the dogs? I am leaving them home for a half day. But what will she find when she gets home? Hey guys, mommy's home. <laughs> Who did that? That is bad! Victoria Stillwell has left Josh and Ashley for a few days to continue the training on their own. So far, the dogs have continued to make progress in the car. With the dogs behaving perfectly, Ashley is able to concentrate on the road, even with the curtain open and the back panel removed. The car training went very well. I can actually drive and focus on what I'm doing and not worry about getting in a wreck every time we hit the streets. Very good puppies. Back at the house, the couple has a friend come over to work on the greeting routine. While Josh removes the dogs, Ashley gets their guests settled. Hey, Come on, Amber. How are you, Jennifer? You know we'll have to have Good. you sit right here. She needs a magazine. Oh, gosh. Have faith. Back. Gosh. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Hey, Henry. Oh, he's being so good. Good boy. So now he's comfortable. That's awesome. It works. So I'm gonna let the other two out now. Okay, okay, sounds good. Encouraged by Henry's calm behavior, the couple allows him to stay while Charlotte and Jackson are let out. Back. Back. Throat's in her face. Good boy. That's good. After just a few moments, all the dogs lose interest. There we go, yeah, it works. Fantastic. I didn't get slobbered on near as much this time as I had in the past, so it was a much more enjoyable visit with them this time. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. I can't wait to see how Josh and Ashley have been getting on with their homework. Today, the couple has brought the dogs to the office to attempt the new routine. Stay. Stay. Throughout the day, Ashley and Josh rotate the dogs between the calming room and the main office. Hey, get down. Good boy. Perfect. If you continue to work all the dogs individually, you are well on the way to having three calm dogs in the office, and that'll make the boss very happy. Later in the day, Ashley and Josh leave Jackson and Henry at home in order to practice with Charlotte on the leash. Yeah, let's go. She still has a couple problems, but let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Close. It takes some work, Close. but Charlotte quickly catches on. She is doing awesome. Well done. You timed that perfectly, and now you're going to be walking that puppy with no problem at all. Let's go. But a passing car reveals a serious new problem. Oh, oh my gosh. I hate Let's how go. she does that. We have to work on that. Yeah. Oh dear, that is very dangerous. We are gonna have to put a stop to that immediately. Back, Charlotte. Back at the house, Josh decides to save some time by walking Henry and Jackson together. See, this is not a good idea to leave her by herself. What are we gonna do? Just, we have to for now. Should we let her out here? No, she can jump well, she's over. She's gonna tear up our door. Josh, I can see you're trying to cut corners here, but leaving Charlotte alone is not a good idea. Okay. This is why I haven't been taking them for walks anymore. <laughs> we'll be back, Charlotte. This is just a nightmare. <gasps> oh my goodness, Charlotte has gotten out. Oh my God, did she jump the fence? This is not gonna work here. I don't have three hours to spend walking. No, neither. Each dog individually. Let's go inside, forget it. Come on. This is a disaster. Now, Henry and Jackson haven't been walked at all, and this is what happens when you push the training too fast. The next day, Ashley feels ready to leave the dogs at home while she heads off to work. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye, guys. This is great. Ashley is finally separating herself from the dogs for a little while. Good morning, Barry. How's it going? Good morning, Ashley. It's going pretty well. How are you doing? dogs today. Yeah, where are the dogs? I'm leaving them home for a half day. But as the hours pass by, Charlotte instigates some trouble. 
They have completely torn the sofa apart. Hey, guys. Come with home. Even though this is a setback, Ashley, you can't give up now. You have to remember, Charlotte's just a puppy. I'm on my way back. Coming up, Ashley and Josh want to throw in the towel. We kind of have decided, well, maybe we just can't leave them until she's older. Victoria is returning to Ashley and Josh's home to follow up on where they've gone wrong in her absence. <laughs> Thank you. Come on in. Hi, How yeah. are you? Oh, gosh, it's so nice to are be able to walk in. <laughs> Space. It was so nice to walk through that door and not be jumped on or mauled by all of the dogs. Let's talk about the uh, leaving them here. Now, I know there was a problem leaving them here. They destroyed the entire cushion. There was a million pieces of cotton. I told you they would not be anxious. Right. But I said, right. I don't know if they will chew. She is still a puppy. She's still going to chew. So that's something we're going to have to address. We kind of have decided, well, maybe we just can't leave them until she's older. No, that's absolutely not what you do. You are so emotionally attached to your dogs that anything that they do that you deem that they're, oh my gosh, they're stressed, or oh my gosh, they're doing this, or oh my gosh, they're doing that. You are panicking. Mm -hmm. Let's gear ourselves up for what happened at the, uh, for, on the walk. Totally Josh's I fault. I have never seen two people so out of control. It was not pretty. It was not pretty. What's this? Oh, they'll be all right walking them all together. I jumped, I, I jumped the gun. Do you know that is the biggest mistake people make, My... and their dogs fail because of it. Yeah. So why? Can you not walk them one by one? What if we take Charlotte one way, one of the other dogs oh. the other way? Oh, it'll be an absolute nightmare, let me tell you. In the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't going to work, but I just I had to see for myself. She quickly set me straight and, and said, we're talking months here, if not longer. Straight away, Victoria wants to address Charlotte's dangerous new habit. Oh, oh my god. Which requires a new command. I wanted to teach Charlotte the word leave it. I just start with a closed hand. Dog tries to work out how she's gonna get it out of my hand. As soon as she takes her nose away from it, she's gonna get it. Leave it. Good girl. I'm gonna do an open hand now so she can see it and smell it. Leave it. Good girl. Leave it. Oh, it's working. Leave it. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> I love teaching leave it to smart dogs because they get it so fast. And literally within five minutes, she understood what the word meant. So that meant I could go out on the road and use it. Charlotte, sit. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Leave it. Leave it. Very good. <laughs> wow. Very good. Oh my gosh. Now Victoria has Ashley try. Okay. Okay, go. Leave it. Charlotte, leave it. Good girl. Very good, good girl. I didn't All think right. she was gonna do it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see? I was absolutely shocked when I did the same command and it still works. Feels good. Yeah, doesn't it just? <laughs> it does. Doesn't it just? And your dog's listening to you and respecting you. Ashley was so delighted at Charlotte's progress. I think now she sees how important it is that she becomes a real leader to her dogs. Back inside, Victoria has a simple solution for the couple to use while Charlotte is still in her puppy stage. So I put these baby gates up because you need to leave Charlotte in a puppy-proof room while she's still at the chewing stage. When you go out, leave the guys in there as usual. Charlotte comes in here, and you can put um, any of her dinner here, a bit of her meat, and a bit of the dry food, pack it in nicely, and she's really gonna chew to get the food out. Great idea. Yeah. I'm definitely more confident that leaving now will be much less of an issue. 
because now Charlotte can't tear anything up. And that was really the only, the only issue we had left. I want you to continue everything that you've learned. And you, Ashley, especially you, remember, the codependency thing's got to stop. Mm -hmm. These dogs can be successful without you. You can have a life without them. You can have a great life with them, too. It's so important that Ashley distances herself a little bit. Codependency is not good for anybody. And if she can, she's going to be happy, and her dog's going to be much more confident. Everything's really good. The training has gone very well. Victoria has given us some great tools. Stop. And it's made uh, mine and Ashley's life much better. Josh and I are so happy with the changes we've made with the dogs. We have time for each other. We can go on dates. We don't have to be constantly stressed and arguing about the three dogs. Isn't that nice now? It's so quiet in here, Josh. There's no barking. Nobody's stressed out anymore. Yeah, I really like it. Me too. Overall, the work situation is so much better. No one's stressed out anymore. We can have the dogs there. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.